It's not ivory, of course. It's actually gravel from my neighbor's driveway. He is amazing. He can shine these things up, shape them, put gloss on them, and give them as gifts. Yay! So anyway, gravel art or gravel jewelry. Okay, this is what this video is about. It's not about gravel jewelry. It's about adding some ease to our relationships. And I want to share an aha that I had. It actually might be more like a duh, but I think that um, out of it, I got a useful metaphor. And so the metaphor is a manual transmission. Like in relationships, any kind of relationship from work, business professional, all the way to intimate, beloved pair bond, okay? The fourth gear is reserved for those relationships that we would, that are worthy of our utmost. And those are the relationships that have the greatest consideration. So like as an example for me, and my example is, a, is it with a cat? <laughs> but I mean, but, and so typically this is for humans, but uh, I have to use my cat as the example for my fourth gear because at the moment, at this moment in my life, he's the only one that I am making um, where I live, where I take him into account for where I live. But aside from him, I could live wherever. But he's the only, you know, life form in the, at the moment that influences my living decisions, like where I would actually, where I would or could live. So that's the highest, you know, for, the, for most people, it might be you know, children, um, a lover, siblings, fr a friend, a best friend, you know. So, so anyway, so that's that special. So fourth gear, it's like, I mean, your life, you know, it really can't be full of fourth gear people because, you know, those are, I mean, like, you just can't be that beholding to that many people. So that's going to be a smaller group of people. And then let's just say, like, at first gear, those are those relationships that you have, and they may not even be by choice. You know, they, it could be like coworkers. You have to relate to them on a daily basis, but it's more circumstantial. You're not brought together by shared convictions and passion or values in the world, but it's like you just happen to work at the same place. So that's first gear. And then obviously the people that you choose not to engage with or that are toxic or that kind of thing, they don't get any gears. So they're not even, in this metaphor okay so that's the setup and now we're gonna you know quickly get into the to, to this like revelation that, to me and that is that I realized there's a you know there's a saying that people come into your life for a reason and a season and it sounds cute right but I mean I really got the impact of that in the need to like regularly assess and adjust, you know, when needed, um, how, like the, the regard that we hold for the people in our life. And the way that I came to learn this is um, there, you know, there was someone in my life who I had regarded as a fourth year person, like almost a fourth year person, you know, this was a person that I just, I helped like that a fourth year person gets the prime real estate in your heart. And so, you know, they're top of your list. And and what was happening, the, like the, the stress or the discomfort or the lack of ease that I was feeling is because I was holding it in a regard that was higher than new information let me know like an adjustment was needed. I was given it fourth gear. I'm gonna go all the way for you. When really it was, I it was necessary to shift down, shift it on down, and slow it down, slow down the the speed, slow down the intensity of care, slow, you know, downshift that. And the thing that I like about this is that it, because it's you know it's not creating disruption, it's not creating disharmony and it's just what it's creating is a shift in me so that because at fourth gear there's you know expectations are higher you're more prone to feel disappointed 
you feel more vulnerable, more belly up, you're more triggerish. I mean, it's, it's more intense at fourth year. You know, you're going faster and, and you've deemed it like worthy of your utmost. So it's just kind of like, you know, de-escalated a bit. And, and so like, for instance, I'm still in very regular contact with this person and I can show up much more, much more lightly and things like say like, you know, hurt feelings or offense or those kinds of things. It's like all of it, all of it de-escalated when I made the realization that based on new information, it was appropriate to downshift the regard I hold for that person. You know, I'm talking about something super subtle here, but now that my life has slowed down and, you know, I'm able, I'm able to hear and understand and see these subtleties and I'm inspired to interpret and translate those as best I can and just to see like, is this useful? Is this helpful? Was it clear? Can you relate to any of the things that I described? My hope is that this could just be like a, just a mental tool that, that could be used for how to lighten the load that we sometimes carry in our relations with each other. It's very fluid. So that's the thing. It's not even like you have to inform the person like going down a second gear, you know, but just within yourself, you just realize like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm consistently feeling disappointed or, you know, or whatever, whatever the, the new data that you've got is, if that, if you're feeling that heaviness, just know that, and if, and if, but it doesn't warrant like total disengagement, then, you know, just consider making that internal shift. That's all it is. It's just saying like, well, this VIP section is actually reserved for different behavior. <laughs> and it's just, I don't know. So you let me know what you think about that. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Mwah.